G'day, I'm Paul. Recently we drove the BMW iX and the BMW iX3. I reckon BMW's EV game is actually not too bad and today it's our turn to get behind the wheel of this. It is basically an electric version of the BMW 4 Series. This competes with things like the Tesla Model 3, the Polestar 2, the EV6. It's in that kind of segmentation. Now this here is the entry level, it's called the eDrive 40 and it's priced at just under $100,000. There is a faster version of this available as well with all-wheel drive, this is just the rear-wheel drive version. Today we're going to do a detailed review of this car. If you do want to skip ahead to other parts of this review, you can use the time codes on the screen or if you're on YouTube, you can scroll down and use the chapters below. Let's talk exterior design. So you've got 12 colors to pick from. All but white is gonna cost you between two grand and almost $4,000. They are expensive colors. One of those colors is also unique to the top specification version. I actually quite like this color. It's like a BMW's version of Audi's Nardo Grey. Um, now, down the bottom here, let's start off with this grille. I know that it's been a little bit controversial in terms of its appearance because it is kind of enormous and stuff, but you get used to it, I reckon, and it kind of helps that you have this registration plate on the front covering things up a little bit. You do get these blue elements around the kidney grille and also this section here that basically signifies that this is the full electric version of this vehicle. Up the top here, that's all closed off. Your main cooling elements are down the bottom. Then they have a radar built into there as well. So look, I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Are you getting used to this big old grill here? Or do you think that they need to go back to, you know, being a little bit more traditional in terms of their design. Over on the headlights, you have a set of full LED headlights. Love this design too, because they have that blue section nestled into there as well with the LED daytime running light. A little bit of a cooling vent or an aero vent of some description on the side there. We'll whip around to the side here. You got yourself a set of 19 inch alloy wheels. Now this car in Australia comes with the M Sport package, which means it has the M appearance, so you can see the red brake calipers there. You've also got this pretty cool looking alloy wheel as well with the uh, brushed chrome look on the outside and then the darker look on the inside there. More of that blue element in the center too. Now this is a fairly low profile tire, so I'll be keen to see how this drives. This comes with adaptive damping, so hopefully they've figured out a way of making this actually ride nicely if you're not gonna go for a punt. Down the side here, if you saw our review of the X3 M40i, if you didn't, you can click up here to watch that. There was a little scallop section that we didn't know what it did. And it turns out it's actually for the carpet light that gets projected out onto the pavement when you do come to the car. So that is what that little section is little LEDs nestled in there. Now up the top here you have body colour on the top of that wing mirror, a bit of camera built into there and also an indicator built into there as well. I want to talk about these for a second. So I don't know, they, they've tried to kind of go down the design path of the iX with those inbuilt door handles. The problem with this is when the car is on a bit of an angle, when you go to open the door, it's really quite hard to grip this. Your fingers just sort of slide out of it. So it's not the best design in the world. And I think I probably should have just kept it the way that it was uh, instead of trying to be all aerodynamic and cool with it. It just doesn't really work all that well, in my opinion. Uh, you've got a moonroof up the top here. Come around to the back of the car. So there's some cool things in the back here. First, have a look at that shark fin aerial. It is very aero. It looks very nice and sleek. Over here, you've got E-Drive 40. That signifies that this is obviously the electric drive version of the 4 Series. I-4 on this side, and then you have the camera built into the BMW logo just there. A little bit more blue down the bottom as well, where you would have normally found the exhaust outlets. Now, let me know what you think about the design of the I-4 in the comments section below. Do you think it looks good? Do you think they've missed the mark with this? Do you think it needs to look outlandish? Or are you happy with where they've landed? Let me know down there. So we're in the i4, we'll start off with the key. You have unlock, lock, boot. Down here you've got some M colors and then you have those uh, metallic bits on the side as well. This is a proximity sensing key. So you can leave that in your pocket. Then when you're inside, you have a very blue start button. Have a look at this interior and this design. So we first encountered these screens in the new BMW iX, and I was a big fan of this because it is BMW's all-new infotainment system. So it's a huge step forward, and it looks so high-end in here compared to just a regular 4 Series. Then they sort of follow it up with these um, sort of tech-savvy materials. You know, it's not a wood grain. It's not piano black. 
it's just sort of something a little bit different and all this stuff is cold to the touch so uh, I think it is displayed very nicely and the interior feels nice and premium especially when you're paying that hundred thousand dollar mark for the car now what about your touch points so that is not too bad in the center there and a little bit firm on the door how firm are they? Well, we've got our durometer. We've tested the main surfaces in this cabin. If you want to see how this car compares to others that we've tested before, have a look at the link in the description. Build quality. Oh, that is solid as a rock. And our door test. That's good. But have a look at this. Isn't that weird? The window goes like half the way down. Normally with these uh, pillarless windows, they sort of just crack a little bit, but that goes half the way down when it closes. So interesting stuff. So when I was growing up, I had a 15 inch monitor and I thought it was the duck's nuts. Never did I think I would have a 14.9 inch infotainment display in a car. So this is really impressive. When it comes to infotainment systems in cars, BMW is one of the leaders and this latest uh, version of their operating system, OS8, I think just takes it up to another level entirely. So you've got a touch screen for this. You can scroll. You've also got the iDrive controller down here. Uh, so this is pretty much as good as it gets. Now, in terms of the features that you have in here, BMW has moved a lot of the buttons that they used to nestle down the bottom here all up into this display. So right now, if you do need to change your climate controls, it's done here and here, and then you have a further climate menu as well. And then if you want to access all of your other functions, it's all done through these tabs. Now, the tabs are interesting because you can configure whatever you want on here using widgets. It shows you the weather. Yes, it's freezing wet, <laughs> just terrible outside at the moment. Car information, it's got a personal assistant, which is used for uh, you know, giving commands to the car if you don't have a smartphone paired. And it's simple stuff like you know, make it quieter, louder, that sort of thing. Uh, and then you have inbuilt satellite navigation as well. On the audio front, you have AM, FM, DAB, digital radio, and that's plumbed through a 10 speaker sound system. There is an optional Harman Kardon sound system available as well. And I will call out at this point too, that some of the stuff that I talk about now may not be standard with the semiconductor issue they're pulling things left, right, and center. So if you are buying one of these, just make sure you check what's standard. Some of the stuff that I talk about today may not come with the car. Uh, smartphone mirroring comes in the form of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now, Apple CarPlay, wireless, have a look at this. It is a full screen integration. And then it's nice and snappy as you move through it as well. And it also has a wireless phone charger, which means you're not going to be stranded with no battery given how much wireless Apple CarPlay consumes when it's running. And this is what Android Auto looks like. This is a wired system, so full screen again. Love that integration. And your maps go full screen as well. So pretty impressive setup there. Just the whole infotainment system in general, I think is pretty cool. Head of the driver, you have another display. It's a little over 12 inches in size. Now this one can also be configured in a number of ways and it's all driven here on the steering wheel. So you can change the layout and exactly what appears on the screen ahead of you. Very easy to use and I don't know. Again, I just think this is one of the coolest systems in the business. They've really just mastered the art of simplicity and just making it work. What's going on on the safety front? Well, you've got AEB that works forwards and reverse. You've got an auto dimming rear vision mirror, blind spot monitoring built into the wing mirror, lane departure warning and a lane keeping assistant. Also has a semi-autonomous steering function. Works okay, it's not sort of too bad. And then on the parking front, you have both front and rear parking sensors and a 360 camera. I'll give you a sticky beak of that one. So you can activate the camera anytime while you're driving. So this is the front view. The good thing about this is you can save points. Uh, they're geocache. So it means at this point, if I do want this to come on every single time I reach here, I can just save that, which I think is a pretty clever feature. But then when you do hit the parking button or you put it into reverse, you'll get these cameras come up as well. So that's your front view. You can then select a back view. You've got a 360 view there and then also side views as well. Quality is okay. Like I can clearly see what's written there, but you can see at those top sections, it kind of just loses a lot of its clarity. You then have a 3D view that you can play around with and move around. Like our suitcase looks like a pancake actually in the back there. So <laughs> I promise it's not a pancake. Uh, and then also finally you have the car wash view. I find this one interesting because when you do go to a car wash, you don't want to curb your wheels trying to get into it. So this basically allows you to follow the contours of the car wash and then it will direct you exactly where you need to go. So pretty handy feature there. Finally, you have a park assistant, which is a semi-autonomous parking function, and then a reverse assistant as well. That remembers your last 50 meters worth of travel. If you want to see how that works, click up here to watch a video we recorded earlier on that technology explained. 
Let's talk about practicality and we will start with your connectivity. So you have one USB-A port just here, a 12 volt outlet here. In the center console, you have a USB-C port and you have a wireless phone charger as well. In terms of storing your phone, it lives on the wireless phone charger if you need to. It fits my big phone, which is good news. Phone also fits here in the cup holders and then center console. You can stick your phone in there if you want to as well. What about our cups? Well, coffee cup, you will be pleased to hear fits beautifully into there. Can also fit our bottle. Big bottle, doesn't fit into there. Fits into the door, which is good, which means our small bottle should fit in the door as well. Yes, win-win. Uh, other storage, you have a little holder here for keys and other bits and pieces. Wow, that goes like all the way into Never Neverland. That's hilarious. Uh, center console. A little bit of storage in there, and finally you have a glove box over here that is eh, okay sized. Now what about your comfort? So you have dual zone automatic climate control, you set those zones just here. You'll notice there is no seat heating, that is optional, bizarrely uh, and disappointingly. In terms of the seats themselves, this car has electrically adjustable seats, so you can go forwards, backwards, you can put your back forwards, backwards, you can adjust your side bolsters, then you have manual adjustment here for this front portion. You also have memory for the driver's seat as well. The seats themselves, they're pretty comfy. Uh, they've, they've got this sort of pretty basic looking material. They don't really have any perforations because you don't have that sort of uh, seat cooling mechanism in there, but got a nice bolster on them. They hug you in well. Then the steering wheel offers both manual tilt and reach adjustment. On our reach test, this stuff is easy to reach, but you do need to lean a little bit just to get to the edges of this screen. Second row, not a great deal of room back here. So knee room is very cramped, toe room very cramped, head room pretty cramped as well. So I was hoping for a bit more space back here given the other competitors in this segment have a whole lot more leg room here in the second row. Um, and Look, I, I know that this was an ice platform, but have a look at this. That hump is kind of unnecessary when you know you develop an EV from the ground up. They obviously haven't done that here and you get these inherent flow issues from your internal combustion platform. But you do get air vents back here. You've got a third zone of climate control in this car. You also have two USB-C ports, these matte pockets, Isofix on the outboard seats with three top tethers. Ugh. Center armrest here with two cup holders. Put that in, there we go, little rubber teeth in there. Fits inside the door as well, which is good news. Now, what about our window test? Let's see what happens here. I'm curious to see whether that will actually go down. No, that's sort of like halfway down pretty much. It's pretty disappointing, I reckon. Um, yeah, okay. But auto up and down on the windows. Let's talk cargo capacity. Open this up so it's a power tailgate. You've got just under 500 litres of cargo capacity here in its standard form. It's not a bad boot, but yeah, these bits here just taper in right at the back there. So you are sort of robbed of a little bit of width there, but you do get these storage bits off to the side and you also get underfloor storage as well. This is where you'll find your tyre sealant. This is also where you can pop your cables and stuff. Yes, there is no storage under the bonnet though. It is just all of the electrical components, unfortunately. So how does it go with our bags in here? Let's give that a shot so that's one bag and that's our other bag so yeah look it's not too bad it's not the biggest space in the world but it will achieve the basics of what a boot needs to achieve over on the side here you've got a 12 volt outlet you also have a hook here and then some hooks down the front now if you do want to expand this space you can drop the second row there is no release lever here you're going to work your way around the car to drop these down, but when you drop the second row, the space expands to just under 1300 litres. Now, before we go for a drive, as the sun finally <laughs> decides to grace us, let's talk about charging. So you have two charging options, AC and DC. The battery pack is a little over 80 kilowatt hours. On the AC front, you can charge using three phase up to 11 kilowatts. DC, on the other hand, is charging at around 200 kilowatts with an average of 120 kilowatts. So charging specs are pretty good there. It is about where you expect a vehicle like this to be in the segment, and it means you have flexible charging if you just want to do AC and then faster charging if you want to do DC as well. So we've just hit the road in the i4. Before I get cracking, it is so wet outside today. It's cold, it's miserable. So we're not going to be able to do anything too crazy. So hopefully I'll be able to give you as much information as I can about the car 
uh, but we won't be able to do anything too fast in terms of driving. Now, powering this, it's a single electric motor for the entry-level version of the i4, and being a BMW, it is mounted to the rear axle, so you get that rear-wheel drive feel behind the wheel. And I guess that's important for the BMW brand. You don't really want it to be something like Polestar, where they use front-wheel drive for their single motor variant, and this is very much a BMW feeling vehicle. Now, what does all that mean? Well, 250 kilowatts of power is how much power you can get out of this. 430 newton meters of torque. So it's a pretty decent heft there and it's enough to get this thing up and moving and make it feel engaging behind the wheel. It does all the great EV stuff. If you plant the throttle, it pins you back in the seat. It even has what BMW calls iconic sounds. So depending on the drive mode that you're in, it will then deliver uh, different sort of noises inside the cabin. They did boast that Hans Zimmer was the composer behind the sound. So um, very fancy um, by the sounds of it. Uh, and yeah, as you go through the drive modes there, it changes in terms of the noise. Now in terms of your drive modes, you have Sport, Comfort, Eco, Pro. With Sport, you can also do uh, an individual configuration as well and tell the car exactly what you want it to do. Uh, and that gives you just a little bit more configurability there in terms of the way that it feels behind the wheel. Let's talk about range and that kind of thing. So BMW claims a driving economy of between 16 to 20 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Now, I'm gonna flick through here what we're currently achieving. We're sitting on 25 and look, it's probably not ideal to be showing you that figure simply because of the weather today. We had to change around our filming. So we did some of the, the faster fun driving earlier in the day and that's bumped that, um, that electricity use up. But when it is sitting between 16 and 20, which is what I was experiencing before we got to uh, the proving ground here, that's actually a decent number. And that means you're getting a decent driving range. So they claim over 500 kilometers WLTP. WLTP is a bit nonsense in terms of realistic driving range, but I would expect between sort of 450 and 550 kilometers in terms of real driving range. And that's pretty achievable and pretty decent for a car in this segment. And it also weighs in at around two tons, which again is pretty good for a car in this segment. When you go to an SUV, they really just supersize their weight and it just becomes far too large. The Tesla Model 3, for example, is lighter than this, but it is still nudging that two ton mark anyway. But to give you an idea, since this car was created in the BMW factory, which was 3,400 kilometers ago, they've been logging the energy use and it's sitting at 18.2. So virtually smack bang in the middle of that range. And that is a really decent figure. Now we'll dial this up to 130, the maximum legal speed here in Australia, and see what it's like on our sine waves. This kind of simulates a country road, and cars with poor body control almost leave the ground here. That is fantastic, really, really nice. So BMW, whenever I drive one, it always runs the risk of being way too firm because they do dial a lot of sportiness into their tunes. This on the other hand is fantastic. It has adaptive damping, and it means that you're able to customize that, that feel behind the wheel and give you the comfort when you need it and then the sportiness when you need it. And in the comfort mode, this isn't too firm, which is great news. Okay, let's put this into sport mode. Now, like I said, it is very wet out here, so I'm gonna be a little gingerly compared to what we normally do because I think we will be all over the shop. Get on the throttle. Yeah, that's nice. We're actually here the other day in the Mercedes-Benz C300, and that was kind of all over the shop with the tires they had on it, and it was wet as well. This, on the other hand, the tires are fantastic. They're really holding on nicely to the road, even when it is completely sopping wet and we hit these wet patches, it feels nice and connected to the road. I also like the steering feel too. They haven't numbed it out or removed all the feel from it just because it's an electric car kind of still feels just like a four series behind the wheel, which is pretty impressive when you think about it. It is hard to take a vehicle that they've honed and fine tuned as an internal combustion car. To make it feel just as good as an electric car. Yeah, I'm really liking this, very impressed by it. Great throttle response in sport mode as well. So when you do lean onto it, it doesn't sort of punch you in the back. It's nice and smooth, but the more you push onto the throttle, the more torque it just continues delivering. And let's roll onto our back straight here. Kick that throttle. It's moving along nice. I can hear those iconic sounds running in the background. Thankfully you can switch those off. 
brake pedal feels good as well. So even here in the wet, it is holding on really nicely. I wasn't expecting that. What you can do as well is switch everything off and have some fun. And I think that is probably what tells you that this is a BMW. It feels like a rear wheel drive four series. The fact they've been able to achieve that to the point where it can even do fun drifty things, I think is testament to how much effort they've put into this. BMW has engineered that M feel behind the wheel, despite the fact this only being the entry level i4 model. BMW claims a 0 to 100 time of 5.7 seconds. This is how it went up against our stopwatch. I'm gonna pop this back into comfort mode. What's it like in terms of your day-to-day -day stuff? So the turning circle is huge for some reason. It's over 12 meters, and that means when you are doing three-point turns, it takes a little bit to actually get this thing maneuvered, uh, which is really strange. I would have thought something this size would be easy to, to turn, uh, and given it's not all-wheel drive, there's no real limitation on the turning radius. Now, what's our road noise like? at 80, 100 k's an hour on a coarse chip road. There is a bit of noise coming into the cabin. It's not the end of the world, but this is what you get when you take an internal combustion platform and add electric components. Uh, so it's not terrible, but it could be just a little bit better there in terms of tire noise. In terms of visibility though, you can see clearly down the front there, the wing mirrors could be a little bit bigger, but they give you reasonable vision down the side of the car with a blind spot monitor built in. Visibility out the back is pretty poor though. The envelope is very narrow there. So the BMW i4, today's weather has been absolutely shocking, but that's been fun to drive. I wasn't expecting a rear wheel drive electric car to actually be entertaining on a wet road because normally they are absolutely all over the place, especially on this surface. So yeah, big up for BMW in terms of making a sporty, engaging rear wheel drive electric car. In terms of the downsides though, look, it's not very well packaged as an electric car because they've taken an internal combustion platform and then turned it electric. So there are some limitations there in terms of what they can achieve. It's also probably a little expensive as well. So $100,000, that's really in the ballpark of a performance Tesla Model 3. Even the, the fast stuff coming from Kia with the EV6, that is absolutely well and truly a competitor to this. So I think probably BMW needs to adjust their pricing a little bit. Outside of that though, it is a fun car to drive. I love the infotainment system the charging tech is pretty good as well so let me know in the comments section below have you bought one if you did let me know how's it going what are you thinking about it are you enjoying it and if you did enjoy this video please make sure you like it you share it with your mates and if you haven't done so you subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon but until next time drive safely